Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Bring It On. Let's deal with this cult under Krasno. The tall, thin man with a large chin stops you when you try to walk closer to the strange, cheap-looking goat statue that piqued your interest from deeper in the cavern. He smiles at you and starts in a calm, friendly tone. Whoa, whoa there. You don't need to go in there, buddy. We're a very special kind of commune. You won't fit in. Oh, why not? Is it something about my face? Oh, no, no. It's just that... Who are you, actually? A mercenary of some sort? Maybe an adventurer? And meanwhile, we are mystics and philosophers, lifters of the thin veil between the worlds. I know how it sounds, but it's true. What my people see as normal might shock and offend you very much. Now, if you're possessed by a demon, we'd find some room for you. But alas... So, if I get possessed by that pig demon. This probably be some unique dialogue here. Um, once I heard about this, or I heard about this person once, Donnie. I would strongly recommend you not to befriend him. Not for the silly reasons he stated, but still. His people are pretty wacky, do all sorts of dumb stuff. Well, I won't come inside, but I still want to chat with you. So be it. For the calmness and well-being of my flock, I'll answer your questions. What do you want to hear? Uh, who are you anyway? My name is Anton, Anton Lashton. I'm the founder of the Dark Goat Cult, and current and its current unholy leader and anti-guru. These titles are mostly for show, though. I'd be much happier if I was called a nature philosophist. Got it. And what are you doing here? My duties in serving the cult of the Dark Goat are many: reading unholy scripture, buying inventory, leading the girls of the cult into ritualistic orgies, and sacrificing stuff. You're a busy guy, aren't you? Uh, what's with the story with the goat statue, huh? Uh, what could be its story? Is it a statue of our god made of natural rock? Or it is a statue of our god made of natural rock. Sitting on his terrible column, the dark goat oversees his followers, judges their good deeds harshly, and rewards their sins. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> uh, any rumors you'd like to share? Some thin-skinned dwellers of the waste believe my flock to be pure evil. These fools have never seen pure evil, but I have. And True to Grad is a secret group that gathers in dank and fetid places during the long cold nights. There amongst the spiders and rats, they play a terrible game they call Kremlins and Baba Yagas. Maybe we'll see those when we go to the True to Grad standalone expansion. They roll crude dice in these places where the sun never shines, imagining themselves to be folklore and fairy tale heroes. In their twisted minds, they create adventures and battles with blood-starved monsters, using the unholy rules from their scripture. I mean, I literally worship the devil, but that crap still offends me. Darn psychos. So I think this is a reference to the, uh, the D&D &D Satanist scare, I want to say of the 80s, when everyone was freaking out, saying that D&D uh, &D was satanic, or devil worshipping, or whatever. It was, you know, it was that whole, whole deal back in the day. That sounds interesting. Oh, I'll say it again. Nothing personal, nothing against you. We just want to see, we just don't want to see you here. Well, as you wish. Anyway, I'm not in the mood for talking. So I want to talk to the rest of their cult. Is he going to get mad if I go in? Yes, he is. Okay, I don't want to kill them. Just want to convince them to leave. Politely, yet firmly. And nobody's happy your cult is living down here. Prepare to be evicted. Their friendly smile is gone, and the man looks at you with disgust. Let me guess. The local banditry asks you to chase us off. I don't want to spoil their plans, but... Yeah, let the man speak. We settled here long ago. All the philosophical concepts of my flock were born here. I even told them this is our holy land. Our unholy, anti-Jerusalem. And those busters want to throw us out and scatter us across the lands? See, evicting you guys is showing kindness. I was actually sent here to kill you all. The man shivers for a second, and his eyes grow wide and fearful. Seriously? It's that bad? My god. Um, I mean, my dark goat. That's too much. One thing is to try and scare us off. Another thing is actually looking for a killer to get rid of us. Guys, these bandits are out of their minds now. Pack your crap and let's move out. The cultists gather their things and flee, leaving most of their suspicious possessions for the taking. That will be better for all of you. 
Well, that's a decent amount of experience for that. I wish I would have been able to talk to everybody else. But I'll take what I can get. So again, being, um... I can interact with the statue. I wonder if our interactions here will, um... Open up any conversation options in Fogolevka with the woman there. So I always felt like that was a bit of a dead end NPC. Uh, the woman dressed in black in Fogolevka. They didn't leave that much behind. I think it's just the statue. The statue is made out of gypsum or drywall, but painted to resemble quality stone. Three whole experience, 300 rubles, and some decent stuff, okay. Why is it saying it's made out of drywall? Does that mean I can destroy it? I don't have any... Six to eleven. Five. Okay, let's use this. Let these guys get away from it. I'm assuming that I can destroy it if it's, it keeps... Or if it says it's made out of drywall. Zero percent. Yep, that was zero percent. It says I have the skill I need to throw it. Right, what is my throwing weapon skill? Yeah, 36. Maybe I can just hit it. It's made out of drywall. Hmm. Let's get everybody back again. I'm gonna try this again. Again, I know where I can get some timed explosives, but it's gonna make all the bandits mad. Guys, y'all need to back up. Well, that didn't work. Okay, well. I'm assuming with the timed explosive we can destroy this. We'll just keep our eyes peeled for one. I'm not gonna sit here and keep trying to fiddle with a grenade. It never works. Let's go turn in this quest. Maybe they'll give us a uh, makeshift timed explosive for as a reward. Am I going the right way? Yeah. It doesn't matter which way I go, as long as we get back here and turn in this quest. And then we probably safe to go up into Krasno now, speak to two NPCs. Uh, one, one is a merchant, uh, so we can check out his armor supply, or his armor stock. And the other one is the, the one that's going to give us the quest to get our next companion. Next two companions. Uh, Simon Spack gives you a sly grin and invites you to sit down. So, did you do it? I'm here to talk about your cultist problem. Good, good. Well, I didn't have to get violent with them. They ran away. All it took was a little pressure. That's great to hear. 
A peaceful solution is always better than bloodshed, even when it's the blood of demon worshippers. Hold on a sec. The man hands you a few bills. Here's 300 rubles for your trouble. Buy something fun, relax, and all that. That's it? Come on, brother. You can do better than that. Fine, fine. You got me. Here's another 150 rubles. Happy? Well, better than nothing, I suppose. Take the money. Here you go. But remember, you have another more important mission. Dealing with Topic Mozambique. Great. I can do something about this situation. Don't go anywhere. Alright. And we're done down here, I guess. We'll head on up top and, um... Speak to two more NPCs. Load time seems a little long. <clears throat> What's going on over here? Okay, while we're here, so this is the Mycelium Cult. Where's the hospital at? I thought it was over here to the left as well. Here it is. Alright, Fidel, your companion, sees the man on the hospital bed and grins. He waddles to him and claps his hands loudly. You look at your fellow soldier, astonished, but the patient doesn't look surprised at all. On the contrary, he gives you a wide smile. Fidel, come in to visit me. Now why would I want to visit you? We were just passing by. Cut the bull. You must have been worried sick. By the way, who's your friend? Meet Donnie, agent on Morozov's case. And this fellow on the bed is Gozin, Mikhail Federo Fed Fedorovich, a local agent. He supervises commercial activities in the wasteland. Nice to meet you, Donnie. I was sure I had seen you somewhere before. It must have been at the base. Uh, probably. Nice to meet you, Comrade Gozin. Yes, I'm so glad to meet you too. You might wonder why. Not just because you're another atom fighter. You see, I have a task for an agent. A mutually beneficial one. A beneficial, you say? This is interesting. Go on. Alright. So essentially, there is, or rather, there was a settlement called Red Fighter. Quite a decent place. One important man from KGB even had his country house there. People say it had a private bunker, too, in case of war. The settlement has long since been abandoned. It's inhabited by nasty mutants, and the local leaders never have the, the time to deal with them. Or rather, they can't reach it, because it's on the territory controlled by the gangs. But I don't care about the gangs. It's a fine place. The houses are basically intact. We only need to get rid of the mutants. We'll have a wonderful base for Adam, and a free trade zone on our hands. A proper use for such a place. Alright. Uh, will there be a house for me? Of course. It'll be an Adam base. We'll give it to the very we'll give you the very best house. Okay, so I take it you want me to slaughter the mutants? I agree. Atta boy, you're a true Adam fighter. Always ready for a dangerous adventure and a reckless plot, which will be beneficial to everyone in the long run. Right. Let me mark the settlement on your map. You hand the map over to Gojin, who confidently burns a neat hole in it with the tip of his cigarette. Here, and good luck with your mission. Uh, better tell me what you do. I'm a merchant. I travel across the wasteland with caravans, and also keep an eye on this place on Adam's account. Now I'm in the city hospital. The old wounds still bother me and the head doctor is my old friend. He always keeps a free bed for me, so I guess you can say I'm on vacation. Uh, now, can I ask you some questions? Of course, fire away. Uh, who are you? My name is Mikhail Fedorovich Agosian. I'm a secret agent and work for Adam. And I'm a mutant. Are you? I never say by the look of you. This is on the outside, and on the inside, if only you saw it. All my intestines are twisted and contorted, I have three appendices, 
Uh, one lung is bigger than the other. My heart is on the right side and not on the left. I can go on forever. It's all because of Krasnov syndrome, or the D-virus, as scientists call it. Wait, wait. Isn't this syndrome just a scary story? This is a misconception many people share. Ever since I stopped being a normal person, I've been thinking about this D-virus. What is it? No one knows for sure. Still, I know a thing or two thanks to my service. The most important thing is that this virus doesn't intend to kill anyone, although most of those who catch it do die. It strives to adapt to different life forms and create a symbiosis. As to how exactly it does that, and why I was lucky to survive, I don't know. That's one heck of a story. Now what do you know of Krasno? No more than my mate Fidel. Backwaters before the war. It's quite decent it's quite a decent city now. Our discreet efforts helped a lot, of course. Without us, it would have never occurred to the local authorities to do anything. I see. Now how's it going in the wasteland? To be honest, it's much, much better than mere five years ago. Before it was like a war zone here, and now there's just random shooting from time to time. Believe me, in comparison to what it was like before, it's paradise. I see. Have you heard any good rumors? People say the mushroom cult hates some Debbie Christu, a cult leader herself. Probably scared of the competition. You don't say. Like goes and shrugs and takes a puff. Right, it's time for me to go. I have a lot of things to do. Like, go conquer Red Fighter and claim it in the name of Adam. After I go to visit the... I think he's the weapon and armor merchant. But most importantly, the armor merchant. Hopefully he has the dog armor for uh, Zulbars. Because again, you can only buy that. Most of the other armor you can usually find on... Um, enemies. But not dog armor, as far as I can tell. I don't know if he'll notice if I go back here and steal stuff. Doesn't seem like it. Why can't I get there? Is it because of Zulbars? Does he just not care? He doesn't care. Okay, perfect. Why well, has a decent helmet? For 7,000 rubles. Uh, I'm sure I have more stuff I can sell. Picked up some bottles. I don't didn't see those when I was scrolling through. Oh, there they are. I mean, this would come in handy. I think this is the best helmet you can get in the game. At the very least, it's up there. We'll go ahead and talk to him since we're here. An aged, thin, muscular man stands near the counter. He's happily repairing a piece of worn, bloody armor. Upon seeing you. The craftsman widely smiles. Hey there, Romer. Welcome to my little shop. Armor for any kind of taste and any kind of wallet, from the most simple ones to pure works of armorsmithing art. Yeah, I'm used to him having just a wider selection. This is uh, a little off-putting. They only have like six items. I can see you're a man who's been to places, so I bet you know the important role of good armor. How can I help you? Hello, great store you got here. Uh, can I look at your wares more closely? I'm good with armor. So I know the right prices for it. How about a little discount? The trader pouts and shakes his head. 
What are you talking about? Discounts. My prices are uh, pretty loyal as they are. And for wares like mine, they are more than fair. Okay, maybe you'd like to talk for a bit. The trader rubs his tired back and gets into a more comfortable position at his stand. It looks like he's a sucker for a good chat. Oh, why not? What's bugging you? A uh, house stuff. How's the trade? It's pretty good, actually. My wares are popular. You can get anywhere in the waste without some good armor on, on you. It can only take one bullet to make you ask for a coffin maker. And my quality is superb, so all the clients I get return to me after a while. I, ne I do need to do a lot of repairing, though. The trader nods at the armor piece he was repairing earlier. Doesn't sound like a boring job. Another question. The trader nods in agreement. Now tell me about yourself, man. There's a lot that needs telling. I served as an ensign, ensign in the army. I was in charge of providing supplies to my division. The job taught me to use my head pretty well. After everything fell, I started trading. Good thing I had a supply to start with. And now, here I am, in my own store, owning a business that actually keeps me afloat. Must be your true calling, if you manage to find success in this field. Another question. Uh, what's this city all about? How are things in Krasno? The trader scratches his nose thoughtfully. Well, it's like it always was. There's corruption, thievery, lies. The top dogs fight for power. The average Joes struggle to survive. The guards rob people blind with bribe money. The mushroom cult is up to some shady schemes. Average life of an average large city. I see. Uh, maybe you heard of some inter um, eh. maybe you heard some interesting rumors. There's a story, all right. Some think it a mere legend, but I know it to be true since I witnessed it with my own eyes. The trader gets closer to you and lowers his voice to a whisper. Right before the bombs fell, a strange gizmo was brought to the base I served at. Highly secretive stuff. The KGB and even Spetsnaz were all over the place. Me and my men were sent to watch the perimeter. That's when I saw it. I continue listening in silence. The trader moves even closer. And one of the men they had with them wore a suit that looked somewhat like the one you get to put on for deep sea uh, diving. A lot of wires and pipes are connected to that thing. First the guy in the suit just lifted his arms and legs on command. Later he started jumping up to 3 meters high. But that was only the beginning. He later started breaking lead pipes in his hands as if they were matchsticks. And he crushed bricks in his hands like they were baked from cookie dough. I bet that wasn't even the limit of his abilities. But then there was this flash and the suit caught fire. They extinguished the flame, loaded the thing into a lorry and drove off. Nobody ever seen, seen the thing since. Well, wow, wouldn't it be awesome to get that suit? I think that that suit, or some sort of power armor, was um, advertised for the Trudograd expansion. So we might see that later on as well. Alright, cool. I'm done talking to him. We're actually going to talk to one more NPC. I forgot about the bookseller. Because so we have a quest to get a book for a guy back in Ultra Doye. Do you get mad if I lockpick this? Alright, alright, fine, sorry. Alright, so they're crafting the double barreled shotgun. Second tier custom rifle. I guess I've already read this one. Yeah, third tier zip gun. Uh, third tier percussion revolver. Tire armor, which looks pretty cool. Uh, healing powder. Wolf antidote. I've already read that one. Read that one. Not sure what this teaches you. Make a boom glove. Make the fourth tier knife knuckle duster. Alright, I didn't know there was four tiers. I thought it was only three. Third tier tri barrel gun. So that probably increases your doctor skill. Spiked glove. Fourth tier battle gauntlet. 
A lot of gloves and gauntlets. A lot of uh, martial arts weapons. Fourth tier, percussion revolver. Third tier, claw knuckle duster. A fourth tier, heavy crossbow. So heavy crossbows use throwing weapons as its... Um, Wait, am I getting that mixed up with Underrail? I keep getting this game mixed up with Underrail. I don't remember which now I don't remember which game uses uh, throwing weapons. I'm pretty sure it's this game. It uses uh, throwing weapons for its uh, crossbow efficiency. The Hunchman over the counter is old. He is very old. Unbelievably so. He looks like he might be 100 years old. But his eyes, however, are still very much full of life. Oy vey, a good customer is my greatest joy. Are you here to marvel at my books, my dear friend? Or would you just like to chat a bit? Old man Abraham will be happy either way. I was instructed to get a book from you. Here's a check. The old man scans the book receipt that the barman in Ultranoia gave you and leans over his wobbly desk. Comrade Tolkien, this fine young man is here to get you. The old man hands you the dusty book and a hard cover and exclaims, Lord of the Rings, One Piece. Happy to be of service when it comes to entertainment and cultural growth of our society. Is it any good? The book, I mean. The old man squints and replies to you with a smirk on his face. Workers of the World United started a, pl a plenary session, started to argue, to jangle, to quarrel, to wrangle. But one smart Jewish boy just took a certain ring, and off he was to a volcano. He and his uh, friend threw the magic ring into the lava, and that was that. No more problems for the proletariat, for the Elvenet aristocracy, and even the ruling class of Vala. I'm on board with that. I hope the bartender will be too. And let's talk about something else. Oh, what should we talk about then, my dear friend? Or maybe you'd like to buy something to read. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. The old man lights up with a wide smile and slaps his hips. Also, I don't know why I didn't give him his name Abraham under there when he introduced himself as Abraham. Oh, you've come just yeah, you've come just to the right place, my friend. Tell me what you want to know. I'll try to satisfy your curiosity to the the best of my ability. When one's life is as long as mine, one inevitably hears many, many stories about everything. Uh, tell me about yourself. Oh, evil tongues had many names for me back in the day, but my mamele gave me the name Abraham. I'm the owner of this bookstore for a long time now, uh, since the pre-war times. There aren't any bombs powerful enough to make me leave this place, because if I ever decide to leave it, I'll have to carry all the books myself. But think of my back. I mean, it was already Ben as a sickle, so so what should I call you, my future loyal customer? My name is... yes? Ivan Shaking Frenzy Stan Stanislavski. Stanislavski. Uh, Donnie. For a moment, the old man's cunning look becomes honest and friendly. What an interesting name you have, Donnie. It's of Hebrew origins. Did you know that? What? It's no laughing matter. All the languages of this world started with the children of our man Adam. Ask anyone you want. It's the truth. Yeah, one more question. Uh, what is it you do around here? I sell books and magazines, my friend. Just look at how many I have lying around here. Old ones, and relatively new ones as well. And here I have... The old man waves his hand in the direction of the sturdiest shelf in his shop. Asamistat, the treasury of the Soviet dissident movement. Shalomov. Uh, Sohenitsyn, uh, Sorokin, and late Trudov. Even my beloved Andrei Sinyavsky and Yuli Daniel. Uh, but these aren't for sale. It must feel great to be such an expert of your trade. One more question. Ask away, my friend. How's life in the big city? How's the trade? The city is alive, my dear man. Isn't it the most important thing? Ask anyone. They'll tell you that Krasno will still be here a hundred years later. But my business, young people now don't want to read anything. That's all I have to say. That's why I'm so pleased to see people like you coming here, my friend. Well, that's nice of you to say. May I ask something else? Uh, rumors, gossip, tales? I'm always interested in those. Uh, recently I've studied the ancient booklet on the history of this city and came across an amazing little tale. According to that tale, in the days of Count Rovsky, a powerful rabbi, Leopold, lived in the, in the local lands. Once the Count's servants ordered him to make an automatic croupier uh, for the gambling houses. Croupier? Croupier? 
Of course our hero created a golem from unburnt clay. In his mouth he put a piece of paper with the word play written on it. And thus the croupier was ready. And everything was fine until one day some pest added the word over to the instructions in his mouth. From that day it became impossible to win a game against him. Neither cards nor dice. And because he became a sharper rabbi, uh, Leopold had to drown his creation in a local river. That's just sad, isn't it? I've heard it somewhere before. Let's have another question. Oh! Wait, what? The old man lights up with a wide smile and slaps his hips. Why does it have a whole other main menu here? I'm more interested in the trade. The old man slightly hunches over the counter and starts busily rubbing his hands. Oh, well that's my pleasure. My goods in exchange for your hard-earned guilt. But the thing is though, that I don't have that much of said hard-earned guilt. Could you give me a discount out of the kindness of your heart? The elderly man waves his hands and shrugs. I understand the predicament you're in, but I am no frayer. My books shouldn't be undervalued. It's disrespectful at best. Just take a look. These are great books. That's why they demand to be paid a good price for. I am just their loyal servant. Eh, whatever, fine. Show me what you got. Okay. Th you're, eh, you're within your right to say no. Having noticed that you are turning towards the exit, the old man clearly starts to panic. Uh, don't be so quick to say shalom and leave, young man. A seasoned adventurer like yourself is a rare occurrence in my modest shop. Uh, please. Maybe you could help this old fool with one particularly nasty business. Now why the heck not? I'm all ears. You are a godsend. As if... Is it pronounced Iwa? I, Iwa? Uh, himself made you from heaven's mana. Listen. Yi... Yi... Iwa? Iwa? I think it's Iwa. Right? Shoot. I used to know how to say that. A new sect of utter Luddites have emerged from, uh, in the north. They call themselves the Illiterate. They only attack those who deliver my books to the other booksellers. According to their crazy faith, illiteracy is to blame for the current state of the Fakakta world. Uh, they believe that if there are no books, there will be no sciences, no educated people, no technologies that could cause the second nuclear holocaust. That's what they say. Even though I am not ready to argue with them, I beg of you. Help me stop them. I would have been able to forgive the anti-Semitism, but the enemies of the book should be allowed to misbehave. And the only thing you have to do is lure them out of their caves is to show up in their habitat with a bunch of books. If there is love for literature in your heart, take a bundle of books and head up north to bring justice to these enemies of the written world, or word. Alright, I'll try to help you. Or what are you willing to give me for it? Well, as is customary, I can promise you that there will be some guilt and gefilt fish waiting for you at the end of this endeavor. And maybe, just maybe, even an expensive book for you, avid reader. Alright, I'll try to help you. I thank you. Don't say anything else, or this old man might start crying as a kinder. Uh, here, take this as bait. The old man hands you a hefty bundle of books. This is, almost, this is a almost complete collection of works by Lenin, bound by a strong ribbon. You take the bundle and let out a whistle. Go walk around the northern lands with this. Sooner or later you're bound to encounter those wrongdoers. Alright, I'll be on my way then. And can I leave, or is it gonna... Yeah, let's see. Is it not gonna let me exit this way now? That's so upsetting. Let me out of here. I have to go back down through the sewers. Alright, I think I'm going to call the episode here. Off camera, I'm going to go back down through the sewers and exit Krasno. And we're going to head back into Ultra Noye before we do anything else. Uh, for two reasons. One, to turn in the quest that we just got the book for. Two, to heal up for free. And three... Well, I guess that's really it. And then we're going to head to Red Fighter try and get our next companion and then we will uh, just start questing because the uh, the final companion is a matter again of time and money so I can just do whatever I want until the uh... so 
So this manhole leads into the Krasno Catacombs. Will you descend? Descend. Yeah, I can basically do whatever I want after I get my next companion, and I'm waiting on the final companion to show up. Because, uh, all I can do is wait. So anyway, gonna call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.